Hi, my name is Randall Sidley. I have a landscape architectural practice and we create beautiful gardens. My office is in, in London um, and I uh, just recently moved to sunny Wandsworth. I have there in my office about 28 people. From there, work all over the world. The garden uh, we're sitting in and admiring today um, is uh, Petersham, um, overlooking uh, Richmond Park. Spectacular backdrop because as the ground rises, you get views into Richmond Park. Which I always say is interesting about landscape, it's borrowing the views. You know, where you have got the opportunity where you, know, you might be looking down from your house across the countryside, <clears throat> always remember, you know, borrow those, those views into the landscape. The design to this garden, um, it, was, it was reasonably dramatic. Um, we changed the driveway. The driveway access was dead center, um, and so was the path dead center. And, and the driveway we created here, I wanted a journey, albeit it's a short journey, but I didn't want to sort of feel that, you know, you just drive straight towards the house. You, you, there's a curve to the driveway, and then you sweep around to the front of the house. And I think it's very important in any property, you know, where you've got a decent sized driveway to make, create the drama. I was um, first introduced to garden when I was a child. I used to um, enjoy myself disappearing down earlier in the morning down to the garden. But I had my own little patch where I used to go and tender my, my garden. But I mean, it was never really intentional that I was going to go into landscaping. I was very much involved in the world of the interior designing. My father was a very world famous interior designer in his life. Yeah, so interior designing was very much sort of the world that I lived and breathed. Um, so it was sort of more of a natural progression as far as I was concerned that I would go into interior designing. And um, I then at the age of 20, I then went to work for my father um, as a draftsman, designer. Coincidentally, a particular client who had two particular gardens in London, that my father needed somebody to design the garden. So he said to me, Randall, you've always had an interest in, in, in garden designs or gardens. Why don't you see whether there's something here that you might get involved in? And that was the age of 21. And I basically never looked back. Um, I had my freedom, albeit there was a lot to learn. Um, it's all very well to design a garden, but you know you have to know how to execute it all. And I basically learned at an early age, surround yourself with uh, talented people who can help you achieve what you wish. So I had the creative ideas, um, and then I surrounded myself with people who could help me sort of bring those ideas together. You know, I'm a great believer that you know, it, I simply can't do everything. I mean, I know that's impossible. I find it hard enough to do everything and I need to try and do now. So, you know, I built over the years, a great team of people. They, they helped me in every way possible. And without them, I would be lost. I probably think maybe 75% of what we produce is by me. But I also like the fact that I want my team to be able to do their own projects. I like them to influence the design. And I say, okay, guys, you know, this is the brief. This is the direction I think you should go in. And then I set the team there to come up with what they would ideally like to see and then we hone it down to probably two particular ideas, styles of designs that they come up with. It can be two master plans or, or two, two versions of it, not necessarily directions, because <clears throat> I think it's, it's also very something I learned about interior designing. I always believe that, you know, a garden, you have the skeleton, you have a structure. If you're very lucky, you've already got existing trees and changes of levels, whatever is happening in the, in the natural fold of the landscape. It is then that I, I build around it. I have very high standards and I always think about plants like being a human being. You want to give them the best environment to grow in. I mean, the smaller plants is easy, but the larger specimen plants, it's the angle of where you plant them. I'm also quite particular about when we buy plants or trees, large specimen trees from abroad. I always m mark the axis of what they're planted on. So when the tree arrives, it gets planted exactly the same axis as it was grown in. Suddenly turn something around back to front and expect it to sort of live happily ever after is not quite necessarily the case. And I think it's just really important that you need to work with mother nature as opposed to just putting her where you feel you want her to go as opposed to where she would like to go.
I travel around the world to go and see my clients, go and execute our projects. Moscow, quite a few years ago, quite a few projects there. Canada, worked in uh, Quebec, amazing project there. Um, it was like <clears throat> once in a lifetime opportunity that, that, that came about. More recently now, Hong Kong, where we've been working for the last seven, eight years on a number of projects. Um, the more recent we're doing in Discovery Bay. It's the most unusual project ever to be given, whereas it's six houses, all effectively on one face of the uh, island, um, overlooking um, the sea, uh, overlooking Hong Kong. And these houses are between six and 8,000 square meter plots. Every single garden has to be d designed differently. Um, different style. So we got the sort of more classic style. We then got slightly more modern. We got one which we call the wave garden. We got another one called the glass garden. I'll be, it's got a bit more, a bit of glass in it, but it's subtle little things. And the waves are all about the, the paving we've done in waves. We've done the swimming pool edge in a wave. We've done the planting um, uh, walls in a wave or a bit more organic. Whatever I do, whichever part of the world I go to. I need to rely on the team, be it the growers, be it the people that source all the plant material, source all the paving. So it really is, you know, what we, what we do is we come up with the creative ideas, we then do design intent, so a package is then given to what would be a local landscape architect who would then take it and develop it. So, you know, that's where we let them then take over. But still, I have a, quite a strong control over the design obviously as it develops into the detail and then the actual implementation again I get very very involved in by in you know in mainland China we go and choose all the trees um, and and for this Discovery Bay project we ended up probably buying something in the region about 900 trees so um, for all the six gardens so it's quite quite a major undertaking and and the plant sourcing Again, a, a, a major undertaking, but you know, working with a good landscape architectural practice there has been critical to the success of the scheme. And it helps the client in many ways as far as I'm not sort of not having to wait for me to sort of look at the detail or be on site. So they've got the team there already looking after everything. And nowadays with modern media and tele information and everything, you know, we can do calls very simply, WeChat and everything else that, uh, and pictures that one can easily just do overnight and answer straight away. We can create all these wonderful gardens, but ultimately you need the right people to maintain a garden of this size. So it, it's, it's, it's the management of what you're creating. For instance, the project that I'm doing down in Salisbury, I found one head gardener, He's got another assistant working with him, so that's two gardeners. It would be great if they could get around to do it all, but I just know realistically he can't. So at the end of the day, we just bring in a company that's going to do it. It means that you don't suddenly find other areas of the garden missing out on time that needs to be spent there, especially with a new garden. The early stages, the first two years of settling it in, it's when my time is involved. I mean, for instance, when I finished this garden, I spent the first year or so coming up on a Saturday, um, doing some digging, weeding, pruning, moving a few little plants around here and there. It's like doing an interior of a house. Yeah, you furnish it and you look at it and think, actually, no, that would look better. You're not suddenly changing the fundamentals of it, but you're actually you know, fine tuning it. With big gardens, there's always a bit of fine tuning that needs to be done in order to get it to mature perfectly. Chelsea Flower Show, yeah. Um, Oh, uh, it takes me back quite a few years. Um, I, many years ago, I did, did uh, two gardens for the uh, Sunday, Sunday Times with, with a wonderful man called Graham Rose. Absolutely wonderful, wonderful, wonderful man. Um, and they approached me and I did these two gardens. And I must say, you know, it was a real sort of like, wow, you know, major sort of, you know, moment in life. But it was, it was exhausting. I mean, it just drains you of all your physical energy and resources because it has to be packed into a very small period of time. You have three weeks to build it. Um, but more recently, we've done two gardens. We did one in 2016 and we did 2018. And, uh, and, and Sally has been very kind and helped us with all the lighting of those gardens. Hay, who, who used to work for me, and, and Hay, who, who used to work very 
very along, alongside me. And, and she came to me one day and she said, Randall, I got good news and bad news. Good news is I want to go about building a garden at Chelsea Flower Show. And the bad news is I'm going to leave and do it on my, in my own right. And I thought, wonderful, listen. I'm delighted that you want to go out there and do your own thing. And, and fortunately for us, her partner is my managing director, Simon Kitchen. Um, and um, the whole thing has come together. She designed it, we built it, and they were incredible gardens. And I'm immensely proud. The end result was fantastic. And hopefully we might do a few more. Becoming a garden designer. I would always say to anybody I ever interview, be passionate. If you're not passionate about it, then don't do it. I say to them before the interview, I say, bring me your portfolio um, and also bring your notebook. More often not be able to judge them within the first five, 10 minutes as to whether they had the passion because portfolio, I want to see their drawing skills, ability. And if it's there, the flair is there, again, you'll see it because you'll be passionate about drawing something, however good or bad. I want to see that they've got a desire to, to translate what they see here onto a piece of paper. And I said, however good or bad, it doesn't, that, that's not critical. And then the next thing, I want to see their notebook because I want to see what the handwriting is like. Handwriting is crucial to understanding how tidy they are. Um, meticulous notes is very important because, you know, I fortunately have a very, 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 very good memory. But again, for people that haven't got the storage, the, the ability to be able to remember all this, you know, writing notes is crucial. So be above all, be passionate about it because it is hard work, be consumed by it. I never ask anybody to do what I haven't done myself. So if it's digging, I've done the digging. There's a lot of people that think they have it, but they don't get themselves immersed in it enough by actually getting out there, setting out the plants. Well, they set out the plants, but actually physically planting the plants. In hiring a garden designer, um, above all, go and check out what they've done in the past. Do your home, homework on, on, on the person rather like you do for your interior designer. Fortunately enough, I've published one book um, which I did about six years ago. I've got another one that I'm finishing now, or was actually finished at publishing in, uh, in November, which is actually called uh, The Garden Before and After. Because I think it's also, going back to your question about how do you, you know, employ somebody, is you, you need to see what the garden looked like before and what they've achieved. Because as I say, a lot of people see the end result but don't actually see what it looked like in the beginning. And I think that's the most important thing. And I've always had this thing about, you know, a garden, you know, winter is very important. You judge a good design on what a garden looks like in winter, because that's at moments when it's at its rawest, when it's at its barest. And the structure still needs to be there because it needs to look good still in winter.